Mr. Mulvaney. Uh, Mr. Duffy. Thank you. And just, I, I want to be clear, Mr. Johnson, um, as well. When uh, we, we talk about allowing the Bush tax cuts to expire, how much revenue would that bring in um, in the first, first year, second year um, of that expiration? Well, the uh, usual time frame for uh, the, the numbers are used are $4 trillion over, over 10 years. And uh, roughly speaking, that you'd expect that to be uh, evenly spread uh, over, over the 10-year period. So that's a substantial amount of revenue. But the, the key thing, and, and the contrast that, that I would emphasize between our situation and, let's say, the European situation, is that we don't need to make a precipitate, immediate fiscal adjustment. We have time to get our debt onto a more sustainable path. I, I recommend bringing debt down to 40 50 percent of GDP. Mm -hmm. And as a result, t taking that revenue more gradually through some sort of offsetting temporary tax cut could also be considered to be entirely reasonable fiscal policy. The point is to change the medium term forecasted future. But so roughly you're saying about 400 billion a year, is that right, would come in in revenue for these uh, increased tax rates? That's the, the standard CBO calculation. And, and the rest applied. would come from tax cuts? I'm sorry, spending cuts? So you're proposing spending cuts as well, right? We, we are proposing to limit future increases in spending, and in, at least in our framework, you do that over a two-decade horizon. So you can phase in some of those spending cuts. You can also begin to limit tax expenditures. That is, that are Medicare, is, that, is that Medicare reform, Social Security reform? Is it the military? What, what, do, you guys, what do you guys look at? Uh, all of the above. Okay. Uh, and it, in your analysis, when we allow taxes, uh, tax rates to increase, there is an offset and impact on the economy. Isn't that right? The economy doesn't grow more with tax increases. It would probably uh, grow less. Is that right? Presumably, look, nobody likes higher taxes, and higher taxes must have some uh, distortive uh, effect. But the question is, how much effect do they have? This is not a high tax country. They, these are not. We're not. Uh, in our experience with these tax rates is not I, consistent with the view they would cause a, a major only slowdown. Minutes, though, but, but you would agree that you raise you raise taxes, um, and that'll have a slowing effect on the economy. It doesn't grow the economy more; it would grow it less. Increased taxes, yes. Well, actually, in the standard CBO framework, the question is, what's the uh, medium-term picture for the deficit? So, if you're cutting Cutting taxes and have a larger deficit as a result, that in the CBO frame will actually so slow growth because you're crowding out private investment so because is, you're issuing more government is, debt. Is your testimony then that we, if we raise taxes, we will increase American growth? My testimony is that what you need, as, as the chairman said at the beginning, is a sustainable fiscal future consistent with economic growth. And in order to do that, you should constrain for sure, future spending and strengthen revenue in part by increasing tax rates. And isn't the best way to strengthen revenue to the federal coffers a growing economy? I mean, doesn't a growing economy have a far better impact uh, on revenues to the federal coffers as opposed to tax increases? I mean, if you look at correlations in American history with regard um, to growing economies and tax increases. Don't you have a better correlation with growing economies, which mean more people are working, more people are making more money, which means more people are paying taxes, as opposed to uh, raising uh, tax rates, uh, there's not that correlation, is there? Of course we want to have economic growth, but as the Europeans have discovered, if you run persistent deficits and you refuse to fund the government on a responsible basis, you get a fiscal crisis. Bond yields go up, private credit contracts. That is the worst possible thing to do for economic growth. And, 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 and I would say that we're in a global economy. I think it's changed over the course of the last 10 or 12 years. There's far more competition from India, China, Mexico, Vietnam, Brazil, Canada. And uh, I guess I would look at it this, like, like this. Uh, you, look, you know big box retailers, right? Walmart, Target, Kmart. If you were to advise Kmart today, you would say Kmart has to bring in a little more revenue to keep their stores open. Your advice to Kmart would be to bring in more revenue. You have to raise the price of the goods that you're selling by 2%, 5%. And if you raise your prices of the goods sold, they'll bring in more revenue. But everyone here knows that if Kmart raises its prices, right, you'll see shoppers go to Walmart and Target. If we raise the price of doing business in America, doesn't that also drive business elsewhere in the world, from, from American shores to China, India, Mexico, other parts of the world that are more competitive? Uh, Congressman, we certainly have to worry about competitors. So you're absolutely right. It's a globalized world and the globalized financial markets. If the financial markets decide that you don't have a responsible fiscal policy, if they're concerned about the sustainability of your debt, that's the worst shock of all. That's where the Europeans are. These, these are rich, proud countries. These are our competitors in Europe who have inflicted upon themselves an awful fiscal disaster that's absolutely going to undermine growth for the foreseeable future. We don't want to go there and we don't need to. And, and, we, and I would agree with that. We don't want to, but I don't think we get there by raising, I mean, I, I think we've done a study here where you could raise your uh, top tax tax rates on the two top uh, brackets to 100% and you still couldn't balance your budget. So we think we have to grow our economy 
uh, number one, and reduce our spending. And my time is up, and I yield back.